Chapter 3 Food, Glorious Food Let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. Hippocrates, 46 to 370 BC Misguided vegetarianism and veganism are becoming an important cause of physical and mental illnesses in our modern world. Due to mainstream propaganda, the majority of the population believes that it is healthy to be a vegetarian. Many young people become victims of this propaganda. It is possible to be a healthy vegetarian, but one has to know what one is doing. It is easy to develop multiple nutritional deficiencies and get into trouble if you don't know how to feed your body properly. Typically, these youngsters don't do any research and start living on pasta, sugar, bread, cakes, and other processed carbohydrates. The typical result of this kind of vegetarianism is gaining weight because processed carbohydrates cause the body to store fat, to store food as fat. So the next step for many young vegetarians is low-fat vegetarianism or even veganism. It doesn't take long for their immune system to collapse and the person starts getting one infection after another followed by many courses of antibiotics. Antibiotics destroy the person's gut flora with many serious consequences. The person develops GAPS, gut and psychology syndrome and gut and physiology syndrome, anorexia nervosa, depression, bipolar disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, and other mental illnesses usually follow. Physically, the person can develop digestive disorders, allergies, and food intolerances. Migraines, arthritis, chronic cystitis, hormonal problems, and autoimmune disease. To understand the whole picture, let us have a look at the case history of a girl called Hannah. The name has been changed. I have described this story in my book, Gut and Psychology Syndrome. Her story is very typical. Hannah was a healthy child until the age of 13. She did well at school, played sports, had friends, and was almost never ill. She had never had antibiotics in her life and was breastfed as a baby for over a year. At the age of 13, she decided to become a vegetarian, which her parents did not object to. From that point on, her diet consisted of breakfast cereals, pasta, rice, and a lot of bread and potatoes. However, she was okay because she ate eggs and full cream dairy and was not concerned about how much fat was in her food. Around 16 years of age, she went to a dancing school where she was put under pressure to lose weight. In order to lose weight, she decided to become a vegan and stopped eating anything with any fat in it. In a matter of a few weeks, she got glandular fever, which was treated with a long course of antibiotics. The glandular fever lasted a year and Hannah still feels that she has not recovered from this infection fully. From 17, she went through almost constant throat and chest infections treated with antibiotics. At 18, she went to university where she decided to become a model, so she had to lose weight again. In order to do that, she started taking laxatives and slimming pills. This went on for two years. She became painfully thin, grew very weak physically, was constantly ill with infections and colds, her menstruation stopped. Her digestive system was in a poor shape. She developed constipa constipation, alternating with diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, bloating, abdominal pain, and indigestion, and she became depressed. The diagnosis of anorexia nervosa followed, and Hannah had psychotherapy and counseling. Her problems led to a conflict with her parents, who were desperate to help her, but all their efforts were sabotaged by Hannah. She continued with her very poor diet, low-fat vegetarianism, laxatives, and all sorts of slimming pills. By 19, she felt suicidal and took an overdose of paracetamol. This led to regular hospitalizations in psychiatric facilities, psychiatric medications, and repeated suicidal attempts. 
As you can see, Hannah was a healthy child before she decided to become a vegetarian. Her parents believed that vegetarianism was a healthy lifestyle and allowed their 13-year-old daughter to make such a life-changing decision without any study or preparation. As a result, their daughter has destroyed her health and her life. Unfortunately, her story is becoming more and more common. What kind of information should Hannah have been given before being allowed to become a vegetarian? What kind of things should her parents have known? Let us go through this information. A lot of what we will talk about in this chapter I have already described in detail in my previous publications. However, this information is so important that it makes sense to repeat it here. There is nothing in the world more powerful in its effect on human diet, on human health, than food. We eat at least three times a day, sometimes more often. Every morsel of food you eat changes your metabolism and your health. Western health systems are crumbling under the burden of chronic disease, physical and mental. The numbers of people who are chronically ill are growing all the time and many illnesses are becoming younger. People get them at a younger age than they used to in the previous generations. The first and most important cause of these illnesses is consumption of processed foods. Let us talk about it in more detail. Processed foods. We live in an area of convenience foods which are very processed foods. When Mother Nature made our human bodies, she at the same time provided us with every food we need to stay healthy, active, and full of energy. However, we have to eat these foods in the form that nature made them. It is when we start tampering with natural foods that we start getting into trouble. Any processing that we subject the food to changes its chemical and biological structure. Our bodies were not designed to have these changed foods. The more food is processed, the more nutrient depleted and chemically altered it becomes. Apart from losing its nutritional value, processed food loses most of its other properties, taste, flavor, and color. To compensate for that, various chemicals are added, flavor enhancers, colors, various e-numbers, and other additives. Many of these chemicals have been conclusively shown to contribute to inflammation, cancer, memory loss, hyperactivity, and learning disabilities psychiatric disorders, and other health problems. Natural foods do not keep very long, so industry changes them to prolong their shelf life. To achieve that, natural foods are subjected to extreme heat, pressure, enzymes, solvents, and countless numbers of various other chemicals. Fats are hydrogenated, carbohydrates are modified, and proteins are denatured. In the process, natural foods are changed into various chemical concoctions, which are then packaged nicely and presented to us as food. Food that is made to suit commercial purposes where health considerations never enter the calculation. The manufacturers are obliged to list all the ingredients on the label. However, if the manufacturer uses an ingredient that has already been processed, or is made from processed substances, this manufacturer is not obliged to list what that ingredient was made from. So if you are trying to avoid something in particular, like sugar or gluten for example, reading an ingredient list may not always help you. If we look at supermarket shelves, we will see that the bulk of processed foods are carbohydrates. Breakfast cereals, crisps, soft drinks and beer, biscuits, crackers, breads, pastries, pastas, chocolates, sweets, jams, condiments, sugar, preserved fruit and vegetables and frozen pre-cooked meals with starches and batter are all highly processed carbohydrates. When we eat them, they put the body in a fat storing mode which causes weight gain and obesity. Our obesity epidemic in the world is caused by processed carbohydrates. 
They create chronic system inflammation in the body, leading to heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and many other chronic degenerative conditions. Processed carbohydrates have a direct effect on our behavior and are addictive. They get absorbed very quickly, producing an unnatural, a naturally rapid increase in blood glucose. A rapid increase in blood glucose called hyper hyperglycemia puts the body into a state of shock, prompting it to pump out lots of insulin very quickly to deal with the excessive glucose. As a result of this overproduction of insulin, about an hour later, the person has a very low level of blood glucose called hypoglycemia. Have you ever noticed that after eating a sugary breakfast cereal in the morning, you feel hungry again in an hour? That is hypoglycemia. What do people usually have at that time in the morning to satisfy their hunger? A biscuit, a chocolate bar, a coffee, or something like that, and the whole cycle of hyperhypoglycemia begins again. This up and down blood glucose roller coaster is extremely harmful for anyone, children and adults alike. It has been proven that mood swings, lethargy, hyperactivity, inability to concentrate and learn, aggression and other behavioral abnormalities in children and adults are a direct result of this glucose roller coaster. The hyperglycemic phase produces a feeling of a high with hyperactive and manic tendencies, whilst the hypoglycemic phase makes us feel unwell, often with a headache, bad mood, aggression, and general fatigue. Another important point about processed carbohydrates is their detrimental effect on the gut flora. Processed carbohydrates feed pathogenic, pathogenic bacteria and fungi in the gut promoting their growth and proliferation. In addition to that, they make a wonderful glue-like environment in the gut for various worms and parasites to take hold and develop. Many of these microbes and creatures produce toxic substances that go into the bloodstream and literally poison the person. By negatively altering the gut flora, processed carbohydrates also play an important role in damaging the person's immune system because gut flora is a major regulator of the immune status. And as if that were not enough, processed foods, particularly processed carbohydrates and sugar, directly weaken the functioning of macrophages and natural killer cells and other immune, system, immune cells and undermine systemic resistance to all infections. People who have sugary drinks, crisps, sweets, breakfast cereals, and other processed foods daily worsen their immune systems condition by these food choices. Let us have a look at some of the most common forms of processed carbohydrates. Breakfast cereals. They are supposed to be healthy, aren't they? That is what numerous TV advertisements tell us. Unfortunately, the truth is just the opposite. Breakfast cereals are highly processed carbohydrates full of sugar, salt, trans fats, and other unhealthy substances. A bowl of breakfast cereal will start your day with the first round of the blood sugar roller coaster with its all too familiar symptoms for you to deal with. Being a great source of processed carbohydrates, breakfast cereals feed pathogenic bacteria and fungi in the gut, allowing them to produce their toxins. What about fiber? The manufacturers claim that with a bowl of their product, you will get all the fiber you need. Unfortunately, it is a wrong kind of fiber for the majority of people. Fiber in breakfast cereals is full of phytates substances that bind essential minerals and take them out of the system, thus contributing to mineral deficiencies, which can lead to osteoporosis and other problems. On top of that, fiber from grains contains lectins, substances that can damage your digestive system and the rest of the body. 
There has been an interesting experiment performed in one of the food laboratories. They analyzed the nutritional value of some brands of breakfast cereals and the paper boxes in which these cereals were packaged. The analysis showed that the box made of wood pulp had more useful nutrients in it than the cereal inside. Indeed, breakfast cereals have got a very low nutritional value. To compensate for that, the manufacturers fortify them with synthetic forms of vitamins, claiming that by eating your morning bowl of this cereal, you will get all your daily requirements of those vitamins. Well, the human body is not that simple. It has been designed to recognize and use natural vitamins that arrive in natural food form. That is why synthetic vitamins have a very low absorption rate, which means that most of them go through and out of your digestive tract without doing you any good. Whatever vitamins do get absorbed, the body often does not recognize as food, so they get taken straight to the kidneys and excreted in urine. So no matter what the advertisements say, there is nothing healthy in breakfast cereals for any of us. Crisps, chips, and other starchy snacks. Crisps, chips, and popcorn, the backbone of children's diet nowadays are highly processed carbohydrates with many detrimental effects on the human body. But that is not all. They are soaked with vegetable oil that has been heated to a very high temperature. Any plant oil that has been heated contains substances called trans fatty acids, which are unsaturated fatty acids with an altered chemical structure. They replace the vital omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids in the cellular structure, making the cells dysfunctional. Consuming trans fatty acids has a direct damaging effect on the immune system. Cancer, heart disease, eczema, asthma, and many neurological and psychiatric conditions have been linked to trans fat fats in the diet. Recently, another strong argument appeared against consuming crisps, chips, and other processed carbohydrates, the acrylamides. The acrylamide story. In the spring of 2002, the Swedish National Food Administration and Stockholm University reported that they had found highly neurotoxic and carcinogenic substances in potato chips, french fries, bread, and other baked and fried starchy foods. These substances are acrylamides. Scientists in Norway, UK, and Switzerland have confirmed this finding. They have also found acrylamides in breakfast cereals and other starchy foods that have been fried or baked at high temperatures. Recently, instant coffee has been added to the list of foods containing these highly dangerous substances. The World Health Organization, United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, and the U.S. Food and Drug Administration have developed a plan to identify how acrylamides are formed in foods and what can be done to eliminate them, since they can cause cancer, neurological damage, and infertility. Acrylamides are so harmful to health that they are certain that there are certain maximum limits set for these substances in food packaging materials. For years, government agencies paid a lot of attention to controlling the amount of acrylamides in plastic food packaging, but nobody looked at the food inside that packaging. Now it has been discovered that some foods inside these plastic packets have incredibly high amounts of acrylamides, way above all allowed limits. The acrylamide story provides another reason for us to avoid crisps, chips, other starchy snack foods, bread, breakfast cereals, and instant coffee. Wheat. Virtually nobody buys wheat as a grain and cooks it at home. We buy foods made out of wheat flour. Wheat flour is the main ingredient in most processed carbohydrates. The flour arrives 
at bakeries and prepackaged mixes for different kinds of breads, biscuits, and pastries. These mixtures are already processed which, with the best ingredients lost. Then they are enriched with preservatives, pesticides to keep insects away, chemical substances to prevent them from absorbing moisture, color and flavor improvers and softeners, just to mention a few. The bakery makes breads, pastries, cakes, biscuits, etc. from these chemical cocktails for us to eat, adding more processed ingredients on the way. Wheat flour digests and absorbs very quickly and will overload your system with glucose. For example, a slice of a typical white bread will give you the equivalent of about five teaspoons of sugar, which goes quickly into your bloodstream, leading to a condition called metabolic syndrome. This condition lays the ground in the body for developing obesity, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, autoimmune disease, and many other maladies. Wheat flour is present in most processed foods. It has become so pervasive in the Western culture that the majority of us don't realize just how much of it we consume on a daily basis. We eat wheat cereal and toast for breakfast, sandwiches and baguettes for lunch, pasta for dinner, and biscuits and cakes in between. About 70 to 85% of everything entering many people's mouths daily is, is wheat. Our physiology has not been designed to consume so much of one particular substance at the expense of everything else. People know that they should consume more fruit and vegetables, but the problem is that their stomachs are filled with wheat all day long and there is no room left for fruit and vegetables. As almost 100% of wheat products are highly processed foods, it is wheat that makes up the bulk of our health damaging processed diets today. There is no doubt that foods made from wheat flour are a major contributor to every degenerative disease on this planet. Sugar and anything made with it. Sugar was once called a white death. It deserves 100% of this title. The world consumption of sugar has grown to enormous proportions in the last century. 171 million metric tons. Sugar is everywhere and it is hard to find any processed food without it. Apart from overloading the body with glucose and causing metabolic syndrome and blood glucose roller coaster, and having detrimental effect on the gut flora, it has been shown to have a steady, to have a directly damaging effect on the immune system. Sugar is considered to be the most addictive substance on the planet. A large percent of the Western population is addicted to sugar. Sugar addiction is the basis for developing all other addictions, drugs, alcohol, tobacco, dangerous behavior, etc. When we eat sugar to deal with it, the body has to use available minerals, vitamins, and enzymes at an alarming rate, finishing up by being depleted of these vital substances. Let us see how that happens. In order to metabolize only one molecule of sugar, your body requires around 56 molecules of magnesium, dozens of molecules of vitamins, enzymes, minerals, and other nutrients. When we analyze a piece of fresh sugar cane or sugar beet in their natural state, in a laboratory, we find that every molecule of sugar in them is indeed equipped with 56 molecules of magnesium and all those other nutrients. So when we eat natural sugar cane and sugar beet without processing them, the sugar in these plants gets used by the body well and brings us only health. But we do not eat sugar beet or sugar cane in their natural form. We extract the sugar out of them and throw everything else away. That pure sugar comes into the body like a villain, like a highway robber pulling nutrients out of our bones, muscles, brain, and other tissues in order to be metabolized. It needs those 56 molecules of magnesium. Where is all that magnesium going to come from? From your bones, your muscles, and your organs. 
Consumption of sugar is a major reason for the widespread magnesium deficiency in our modern society, leading to high blood pressure, heart attacks, strokes, neurological, immune, and many other problems. And this is only magnesium we have discussed. What about all the other nutrients that will be depleted in your body as a result of eating sugar? Their deficiencies will bring you many other symptoms and health problems. Cakes, sweets, and other confectionaries are made with sugar and wheat flour as the main ingredients, plus lots of chemicals, colors, preservatives, flavorings, etc. It goes without saying that they should be out of the diet if we are to prevent every modern disease. Soft drinks, pops, cordials, lemonades, etc. are a major source of sugar in our modern diets, not to mention chemical additives. A can of soda can contain from 5 to 10 teaspoons of sugar. Consumption of soft drinks is one of the main reasons for epidemic of metabolic damage of metabolic syndrome and obesity, particularly in children. When we are thirsty, our bodies need water, not sugary chemical concoctions in colorful bottles. Commercial fruit juices are no better. They are full of processed fruit, sugars, and molds. Unless freshly pressed, they should not be in our diet either. While we are talking about drinks, it makes sense to mention beer. Beer is made from grains and sugar and full, and is full of partially broken down starch. It presents your body with a double whammy of highly processed carbohydrate in combination with alcohol. It causes metabolic syndrome in the body. The so-called beer belly is one of the signs of this disorder. Consumption of beer is a major factor in obesity, diabetes, and heart disease epidemics. So if we would like to avoid these disorders, we have to make beer consumption very occasional. As people become aware of the harmful effects of sugar on health, the industry keeps coming up with various new chemical sweeteners and puts them into food production using powerful marketing tools. It usually takes science a few years to find out about their damaging effects on health. A good example is saccharine. It had been on the market for decades before science found that it causes cancer. Another example is aspartame. Aspartame, aspartame, a sugar replacement in so-called diet drinks. It has been found to be carcinogenic and neurotoxic. It has been particularly implicated in our epidemic of multiple sclerosis. Another modern sweetener is high fructose corn syrup. Despite the fact that it has been proven to cause just about every chronic disease on the planet, it continues to be used extensively by the food industry in processed foods and soft drinks. It is best to avoid all man-made sweeteners as they are not natural to our physiology. Mother Nature gave us good healthy sweeteners, which we will discuss later. Processed fats. All margarines, butter replacements, spreadable butter, vegetable oils, cooking oils, hydrogenated oils, shortenings, and many other common fats are processed fats which are alien to our human physiology and must not be consumed if we want to avoid every modern degenerative disease. You will find processed fats in most processed foods, breads and pastries, chocolates, ice cream, biscuits, cakes, pre-prepared meals, crisps, snacks, popcorn, sauces, mayonnaise, condiments, all fried foods, baby formula, vegetarian foods, etc. The basis of all processed fats are vegetable oils. Vegetable oils are extracted from plants. All plant oils contain very fragile polyunsaturated fatty acids which are easily damaged by heat, light, and oxygen. That is why Mother Nature has hidden them away very carefully in the cellular structure of plants, in their oily seeds, leaves, stems, and roots. When we eat plants in their natural form, we get these oils in their pristine state, and they are very good for us. But when we take plants to our big factories and extract the oils from them, something very different happens. 
Very high temperatures, pressure, and various chemicals are employed, which change the structure of fragile fatty acids in the plant matter, creating a plethora of unnatural, chemically mutilated, harmful fats. Then these chemically mutilated oils are put into bottles and sold in supermarkets as cooking oils and vegetable oils, and added to all processed foods. From the very beginning of these oils appearing in the human food chain, worried scientific studies started coming out de demonstrating that industrial vegetable oils cause cancer, heart disease, diabetes, neurological damage, infertility, immune abnormalities, and other health problems. These oils are full of chemically changed fatty acids which our hormone bodies are not meant to have. Many of these changed fats and vegetable oils have not even been studied yet and we don't know what havoc they have they wreak in the body. However, a group called trans fats has received a great deal of attention. These are unsaturated fatty acids whose chemical structure has been changed through processing. Trans fatty acids are very similar in their structure to their natural counterparts, but they are somewhat back to front. Because of their similarity, they occupy the place of essential fats in the body while being unable to do their jobs. That, in a way, makes cells disabled. All organs and tissues in the body are affected. For example, trans fats have great immune suppressing ability, playing a detrimental role in many different functions of the immune system. They have been implicated in diabetes, atherosclerosis, cancer, and neurological and psychiatric conditions. They interfere with pregnancy and conception, the normal production of hormones, the ability of insulin to respond to glucose, and the ability of enzymes and other active substances to do their jobs. They have damaging effects on the liver and kidneys. A breastfeeding mother would have trans fat in her milk fairly soon after ingesting a helping of healthy butter replacement. A baby's brain has a very high percentage of unsaturated fatty acids. Trans fats would replace them and it interferes with the brain development. There is simply no safe limit of trans fats in the diet. And yet a packet of crisps will provide you with about 60 or with about six grams of trans fats. A small snack packet of cookies will give you seven to 12 grams. A snack packet of processed cheese, mainly advertised to children, will provide eight grams of trans fats. A tablespoon of common margarine will give you four to six grams. A portion of french fries cooked in vegetable oil will serve you with eight to nine grams of trans fats. Given their ability to impair bodily functions on the most basic biochemical levels, there is no doubt that their role in our modern epidemics of degenerative disease is greatly underestimated. Trans fats and other processed fats can directly cause immune problems, infertility, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, mental illness, and many other health problems. In order to make vegetable and cooking oils look solid and prolong their shelf life, they are hydrogenated. hydrogenated. Hydrogenation is a process of adding hydrogen molecules to the chemical structure of oils under high pressure at a very high temperature, 120 to 210 Celsius. In their presence of nickel, Aluminum and sometimes other metals, remnants of these toxic metals stay in the hydrogenated oils, adding to the general toxic load, which the body then has to work hard to get rid of. Hydrogenation of vegetable oils creates products which are even more toxic and harmful to health. Consumption of large amounts of vegetable and cooking oils presents another problem for the body the excess of omega, of omega-6 fatty acids. To be healthy, our bodies require a very delicate balance between different fatty acids. When we eat plants in their natural state, the oils we consume from them do not upset that balance. 
but when we eat processed foods full of vegetable cooking oils, we receive excessive amounts of omega-6 fats, which contribute to a pro-inflammatory environment in the body and lead to disease. Processed salt. Only a small percentage of all industrial salt production goes for human consumption. More than 90% of salt produced is used for industrial applications. The making of soaps, detergents, plastics, agricultural chemicals, PVC, etc., etc. These industrial applications require pure sodium chloride. However, salt in nature contains many other elements. In fact, natural crystal salt and whole sea salt contain all the minerals and trace elements that the human body is made of. In this natural state, salt is not only good for us, but essential. Because the industry requires pure sodium chloride, all other elements and minerals are removed from the natural salt. We consume it under the name of table salt, and of course all our processed foods contain plenty of it. This kind of salt upsets our homeostasis on the most basic level. Our bodies have been designed to receive sodium chloride in combination with all the other minerals and trace elements that a natural salt would provide. Pure sodium chloride draws water to itself and causes water retention with many consequences such as high blood pressure, tissue edema, and poor circulation. As the body tries to deal with the excess of sodium chloride, various harmful acids and gallbladder and kidney stones are formed. As sodium in the body works in a team with many other minerals and trace elements, potassium, calcium, magnesium, copper, zinc, manganese, etc. The levels of those substances get out of normal balance. The harmful results of table salt consumption can be numerous and very serious. That is why most medical practitioners, including mainstream doctors, tell us to not consume table salt. Our planet has plenty of good quality salt for us to consume. Throughout human history, salt has been highly valued. It, is, it used to be called white gold. The Roman Empire paid its soldiers with salt. Hence the word salary. Natural salt is just as fundamental to our physiology as water is. We need to consume salt in its natural state, as a crystal salt from salt mines or as whole unprocessed sea salt. There are a number of companies around the world that can provide you with good quality natural salt. No soya, please. Soya is a very big business, particularly in the USA. A large percentage of the industry uses genetically modified soya. Soya is cheap to provide to produce and following some questionable research showing that it can be beneficial for menopausal women. The market has exploded with soya products. Soya can be found in many processed foods, margarines, salad dressings and sauces, breads, biscuits, pizza, baby food, children's snacks, sweets, cakes, vegetarian products, dairy replacements, infant milk formulas, etc. Is there a problem with that? Let us have a look at some facts. In Japan and other Eastern cultures, soya is traditionally used as a whole bean or fermented as soy sauce, tofu, natto, miso, and tempeh. The form in which soya is used in the West is called soy protein isolate. How is it made? After removing the fiber with an alkaline solution, the soya beans are put into large aluminum tanks with an acid wash. Acid makes the soybeans absorb aluminum which will remain in the end product. Aluminum has been linked to dementia and Alzheimer's disease and indeed there has been a lot of publicity recently that links soya consumption with these mental disorders. After the aluminum acid wash, the beans are treated with many other chemicals, including nitrates, which have been implicated in cancer development. The end product is an almost tasteless powder, easy to use and add to any food. 
The majority of processed foods contain this powder and of course soya milk, yogurt, and infant formulas are made out of it. It is a highly processed substance with poor nutritional value and a lot of harmful qualities. Animals fed this product die from cancer and malnourishment and produce sick offspring. Recently, its consumption has been linked to cancer, autism, inflammation, and other degenerative conditions in humans. Soya is a natural goitrogen. What does that mean? It means that soya has an ability to impair thyroid function. Low thyroid function has very serious implications for your health, including inability to lose weight, depression, poor immune function, heart disease, and many other problems. Soya beans have a very high concentration of phytates. These substances are found in all grains as well, particularly in their bran. Phytates have a great ability to bind to minerals, which prevents them from being absorbed, particularly calcium, magnesium, iron, and zinc. Soya has gained its popularity as a treatment for menopause because it contains plant estrogens, which do not work in the body in the same way as their natural counterparts do. It is questionable whether these substances are indeed useful for menopausal women. For the rest of us, particularly for men and children, they are most definitely harmful. There is growing concern among health professionals about the quantity of plant estrogens infants and small children might be getting from soy mil soya milk and infant formulas. Western producers of soy would like you to believe that the health of Japanese people depends on their consumption of soya. The truth is very different. Soya in Japan is consumed largely in a fermented form and in small amounts. If you want to eat soya, have it only in the natural traditional fermented form as soy sauce, natto, misu, tofu, and tempeh. These foods are prepared according to traditional wisdom which has served people in the East for centuries. Vegetarians who consume meat replacements made out of soya must study this information and understand what they are doing to their bodies. What should we eat to be healthy and full of energy? Let's start with shopping. Buy your food in the shape and form that nature has made it and prepare it yourself at home using traditional methods of cooking on the stove, the grill, or in the oven. Avoid microwaves as they destroy food and can make it carcinogenic. What should we buy? Buy meats, fresh or frozen, including game and organ meats. Avoid all mainstream processed meats, hams, bacon, sausages, delicacin, tin meats, etc. because they are full of preservatives and other chemicals that have been proven to cause illness. Meats prepared in a traditional way using natural salt and fermentation are safe to eat and taste much better. Traditional hams, sausages, and salami. Avoid genetically modified meats. Our physiology has been designed to have meats as nature designed them without antibiotics, pesticides, and other chemicals. Look for natural pasture-fed meats, preferably organic. Avoid lean meats. Our physiology can only use meat fibers when they come with the fat, collagen, and other substances that a proper piece of meat will provide. When we eat poultry, it is important to eat the skin and the fats, as well as the meat. And the most valuable nutrients come from the legs, wings, skin, and carcass of the bird, not so much from the breast. If you want sausages, find a local butcher who will make them for you on order with just minced meat, full fat, sausage, pepper, chopped onion, and any fresh herbs of your choice. Order them in bulk and keep them in the freezer. Once you have tasted these sausages, you will never want to eat the commercial ones again, full of wheat and chemicals. Contrary to popular belief, it is meats, fish, and other animal products that have the highest content of vitamins, 
amino acids, nour nourishing fats, many minerals, and other nutrients which we humans need on a daily basis. All this nutrition in meats and fish almost also comes in the most digestible form for us humans. I find it deceptive when vitamin tables in some books on nutrition show that plant foods, grains, vegetables, fruit, etc. provide all our vitamins. First of all, the form in which plants contain these vitamins is difficult for us to digest. Secondly, if you compare the amounts of vitamins in meat, fish, or other animal products with plant foods, it is the animal products that are at the top of the list. Let us have a look at some of them. Vitamin B1, thiamine. The richest sources are pork, liver, heart, and kidneys. Vitamin B2, riboflavin. The richest sources are eggs, meat, milk, poultry, and fish. Vitamin B3, niacin. The richest sources are meat and poultry. Vitamin B5, pantothenic acid. The richest sources are meat and liver. Vitamin B6, pridoxine. The richest sources are meat, poultry, fish, and eggs. Vitamin B12, Cyanus coblamin. The richest sources are meat, poultry, fish, eggs, and milk. Biotin. The richest sources are liver and egg yolks. Vitamin A. The richest sources are liver, fish, egg yolks, and butter. We are talking about the real vitamin A, which is ready for the body to use. You will see in many publications that you can get vitamin A from fruit and vegetables in the form of carotenoids. The problem is that carotenoids have to be converted into real vitamin A in the body. And a lot of us are unable to do this conversion because we are too toxic or because we have an ongoing inflammation in the body. So if you do not consume animal products with a real vitamin A, then you may develop a deficiency in this vital vitamin despite eating lots of carrots. Vitamin A deficiency will lead to impaired immunity and development of any chronic illness in the body. Vitamin D. The richest food sources are fish, liver, oils, eggs, and fish. Vitamin K2. Menaquonine. The richest sources are organ meats, full fat cheese, good quality butter and cream, yellow from grass-fed animals, animal fats, and egg yolks. This vitamin is essential for our health. Its deficiency leads to de deposition of calcium in the soft tissues and in initiation of inflammation. Apart from the high-fat foods, an important source of this vitamin is our own gut flora. The probiotic bacteria in the gut pro produce and release vitamin K2. Fermented foods contain vitamin K2 as a bacteria produce it in the process of fermentation. Natto, fermented soybeans, is one of the richest sources in Eastern culture, while in the West, well-aged natural full-fat cheese is a good source of this vitamin. All these vitamins are absolutely essential for us humans. We cannot live without them, let alone function well. Three well-researched vitamins, which are generally thought to come from plants, are vitamin C, folate, and vitamin K1, philoquinine. However, now we know that liver contains good amounts of both vitamin C and folate. Combining meats and fish with vegetables in your meals will provide you with a full spectrum of nutrients. Organ meats, liver, kidney, heart, brain, tongue, etc. have been considered to be a delicacy and the most valuable food in all traditional cultures. These foods contain concentrated amounts of nutrients. Fresh liver is an absolute powerhouse of nutrition for our physiology and should be consumed on a regular basis, particularly by people with nutritional deficiencies. People with anemia should have fresh liver and red meats daily, lamb, fish, game, and organ meats in particular, because these foods are the best remedy for anemia. 
Not only do they provide iron in the heme form, the form that the human body absorbs best, but they also provide the B vitamins and other nutrients essential for treating anemia. Meats also promote better absorption of non-heme iron from vegetables and fruits, while vitamin C from vegetables and greens promotes absorption of iron from meats. Large epi epidemiological studies show that eating red meat is associated with a much lower incidence of iron deficiency and anemia in various countries of the world. The mainstream misinformation about meats, particularly red meats, has been driven by commercial powers, which profit from replacing these natural foods with their processed alternatives. Fresh natural meats have nothing to do with heart disease, cancer, or any other disease, and are important for us to eat in order to provide all the nutrients we humans need. Homemade meat stock is a wonderful nutritional and digestive remedy, something our grandmothers used to make on a daily basis. The best stock is made from bones, joints, and offcuts. All you have to do is boil them on a low heat for two to three hours in water with some salt and pepper added. As you cook bones, joints, and meats in water, the, nutri the nutrients from them gets extracted into the water. The resulting stock is rich in collagen, gelatin, minerals, amino acids, and many other nutrients, which have a healing effect on your digestive system, your joints, your brain, your immunity, and the rest of your body. Use these meat stocks for making soups, stews, and simply as a warming therapeutic drink with and between meals. Chicken stock made from a whole chicken is the best remedy for a cold or tummy upset. It goes without saying that all commercially available stock, granules, and cubes are to be avoided. They do not possess any of the healing properties of a homemade meat stock and are full of detrimental ingredients. Meats cooked in water are easier to digest for a person with a sensitive digestive system. Buy fish and shellfish fresh or frozen. Avoid tinned, cooked, dyed, and other processed fish and shellfish. Wild fish is always better than farmed. There is a question, however, about mercury and other pollutants that we pump into our oceans and rivers. For that reason, some official bodies recommend limiting fish consumption. However, research shows that people who consume more fish are in better health than people who limit it. A healthy human body has a good ability to handle pollutants and remove them. The first and the best barrier to any pollution coming with food is healthy gut flora. The beneficial bacteria in our gut flora have an excellent ability to bind, neutralize, and remove from the body mercury, lead, and other heavy metals and toxins. However, in people with damaged gut flora, these poisons remain in the body, so restoring normal gut flora is very important, particularly after a course of antibiotics. To limit your exposure to environmental toxins, it makes sense to avoid large carnivorous fish such as tuna, shark, and swordfish as they accumulate more pollutants than small fish. Smaller fish such as oily fish, sardines, mackerel, and herring, and any other wild fish are important for us to eat on a regular basis. They provide us with good proteins, minerals, and essential fats. Fish oils are the best anti-inflammatory remedies nature has given us, and they work best when consumed as part of the whole fish. Buy fresh eggs from free-range hens, preferably organic. Eggs are a wonderful, wonderful food, full of easy to digest nutrition. A raw, a fresh raw egg yolk is absorbed literally without needing digestion and provides you with almost every nutrient under the sun in the best possible biochemical form. In the pre-antibiotic era, raw eggs were traditionally used as a cure for tuberculosis because they provide powerful immune boosting nutrients. Any person with memory loss must have at least three, preferably five to six fresh eggs a day. 
It has been demonstrated in a number of clinical trials that eating fresh eggs improves memory. Learning ability and behavior in children can be improved tremendously by consumption of fresh eggs. Children should have at least two eggs a day. The faulty hypothesis that fats and cholesterol cause heart disease has scared people away from eating eggs because they contain cholesterol. Cholesterol is one of the most important substances in the human body. The story that it causes heart disease is an absolute fallacy. Cholesterol is an essential to life substance and eating dietary cholesterol is, more, is no more harmful than drinking water. Please read a full description of cholesterol's role in human health in my book, Put Your Heart in Your Mouth, What Really Causes Heart Disease and What We Can Do to Prevent and Even Reverse It. It goes without saying that you must avoid any processed eggs, dried egg powders, mixes, etc. Fresh eggs are an excellent food for, brick, for breakfast, cooked any way you like. Serve with a fresh salad and plenty of cold pressed virgin olive oil. Eggs will set your blood sugar and body biochemistry at a normal level for the day. Buy fresh vegetables, not frozen, tinned, cooked, or otherwise processed. French artichoke, beets, asparagus, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, carrots, cucumber, celery, marrow, courgette, zucchini, eggplant, garlic, onions, kale, lettuce, mushrooms, parsley, green peas of all colors, peppers of all colors, pumpkin, squash, spinach, tomatoes, turnips, watercress, and other low starch vegetables are your best choices. Those of you who grow your own organic vegetables know that they do not keep even two days. As soon as you pick them, they start wilting. So how do all the vegetables in our supermarkets look fresh for weeks? The industry washes them in chemical solutions to preserve them, even organic vegetables. Every time we eat these vegetables, we eat chemicals. This particularly applies to greens, spinach, salad leaves, lettuce, etc. The only solution to this problem is to have your own organic garden. Not only will it provide you with wonderful food, but you will spend more time in the fresh air and sunlight communing with, nat with Mother Nature. There is a mountain of information available on the benefits of eating vegetables as they contain a plethora of wonderful nutrients. They should be eaten every day, both cooked and raw. Cooked vegetables are easier to digest and provide warm nourishment for the body, while raw vegetables keep our bodies clean inside as they provide powerful detoxifying substances and the best quality fiber. In cold weather and when you have a cold, eat plenty of warming soups and stews with well-cooked vegetables. Cold salads do not agree with our physiology in those conditions. However, in hot weather, cold salads are exactly what we need. The best vegetables come from people's private gardens, fresh in season and usually organic. Vegetables that have to travel half across the world to reach your table are not in the same league in any possible way. Try to replace wheat products such as bread, pasta, pastries, pies, biscuits, etc. with vegetables and your body will reward you in a matter of days with better health, more energy, clearer thinking, and good sleep. Buy fresh fruit, not cooked, tinned, frozen, or processed in any way. Fruit needs to be ripe. Unripe fruit is difficult to digest. You have to understand that anything you cannot digest properly will do you no good. Unfortunately, a lot of fruit in your supermarket is likely to be unripe. Sweet and tropical fruits should be consumed between meals as they may interfere with the digestion of meats. The exceptions are avocado, tomato, lemon, and other fruits that do not taste sweet. People who have abnormal gut flora often cannot digest different fruits and have to avoid them. Once you take steps to improve your gut flora, you may be able to eat fruits that you could not tolerate before. Just like vegetables, the best fruit comes from people's private gardens. Fresh, organic, picked ripe, and full of nutrients. 
Commercially produced fruit is likely to be sprayed with chemicals, picked unripe, and grown on exhausted soils. Organic is always better than non-organic. I know a lot of people who could not tolerate various fruit and vegetables until they switched to their organic counterparts. Berries are a wonderful variety of fruit, absolutely packed with cleansing nutrients. Raspberries, black, red, and white currants, gooseberries, elderberries, blackberries, strawberries, etc. are full of vitamins, antioxidants, minerals, and many other substances that will regulate your blood sugar level and keep your body clean on the inside. <clears throat> Regular consumption of uncooked fresh or frozen berries will prevent heart disease, cancer, and many other maladies. Take any chance to pick your own berries in season and freeze them for the winter. When you want to have jam, just defrost some berries and mix them with honey to taste. Make just enough to consume in a few days because this jam will not keep for long. Buy natural organic dairy. Unprocessed milk, unprocessed cream, fresh natural butter, not spreadable and not butter substitutes, natural ghee, natural live yogurt, kefir, and natural cheeses produced in a traditional way. Avoid all processed cheeses, dried, and long life milk and cream, and other long life or processed dairy. One processing that most commercial milk is subje subjected to nowadays is homeogenization when the milk is forced through a fine mesh to break down the fat globules. This is done purely for cosmetic purposes and takes the milk one more step away from its natural state, make, making it more processed. It is particularly important to stick to organic dairy as milk accumulates most chemicals that non-organic cows are exposed to. Dairy products are full of wonderful nutrition and are important for us to eat. However, a lot of people cannot tolerate milk. This is because commonly available milk has been pasteurized. Pasteurization destroys milk. It changes the chemical structure of its proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, kills beneficial bacteria, and destroys enzymes and vitamins. Pasteurized milk is difficult for most of us to digest, particularly infants and children. That is why milk allergy and intolerance is so common. Unprocessed and pasteurized straight from the cow milk is very easy to digest as it contains enzymes that digest the milk for you to some degree. However, this milk must be organic and should come from natural breeds of animals. Non-organic cows often have mastitis, so a lot of pus and infection, infectious organisms finish up in their milk. This kind of milk has to be pasteurized. Organic pasture-fed cows are healthy and their milk is free from infections. It does not need no pasteurization. There is a growing number of farmers around the world who produce organic, unprocessed, unpasteurized milk from grass-fed cows. If you look for such a farmer in your area, you may be surprised to find one without too much difficulty. Milk contains a sugar called lactose. Some people get diagnosed as lactose intolerant. Well, after infancy, we are all lactose intolerant because the human gut does not produce an enzyme to digest lactose called lactase. So how do many of us manage to digest milk? Because we have a particular species of probiotic bacteria in the gut that do this work for us. Some of the most well-studied lactose digesting species are physiological strains of E. coli. People who cannot digest lactose have abnormal gut flora. They are lacking those probiotic bacteria. Instead of sentencing yourself to consuming highly processed lactose-free dairy products, you need to restore your gut flora by eating fermented foods and consuming good quality probiotics. Read more on this subject in my GAPS book. Fermented dairy products such as live yogurt, kefir, natural traditional cheeses, and butter have greatly reduced lactose contents 
and are usually tolerated well by lactose intolerant people. Pasteurization of milk is a major contributor to lactose intolerance in the population. Raw fresh milk contains an active enzyme, lactase, to digest the lactose for you, but this enzyme is destroyed by pasteurization. Many lactose intolerant people find that they can digest raw milk perfectly well, while pasteurized milk causes all the usual unpleasant symptoms of lactose intolerance, bloating, indigestion, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. Buy unprocessed nuts and oily seeds. Walnuts, almonds, Brazil nuts, pecans, hazelnuts, cashew nuts, chestnuts, peanuts, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, etc. Do not buy them cooked, roasted, salted, coated, or processed in any other way. Buy them just shelled or in their shells. Nuts, sunflower, sesame, and pumpkin seeds can be ground into flour consistency and used for making breads and cakes at home. Nuts and seeds are full of good nutrients and are very important for us to eat. There is a mountain of research to show that regular consumption of these foods prevents heart disease, cancer, autoimmune disorders, and many other health problems. It is not difficult to make nuts a normal part of your diet. Just put a mixture of nuts, seeds, and dried fruit in, a, in an attractive bowl and keep it on your coffee table in front of the TV set. You will be surprised how quickly your family gets used to snacking on these health-giving foods instead of eating harmful commercial processed snacks. Keep in mind that nuts and seeds are very fibrous and can be difficult to digest. If you have digestive problems, please study the GAPS diet in my book, Gut and Psychology Syndrome. Buy organic beans and pulses. Buy them in their whole natural form and cook them at home. Avoid commercially ava available tin beans and pulses as they are processed foods full of sugar and other additives. Before cooking, all beans and pulses have to be pre-soaked in water for at least 12 hours to reduce the amounts of lectins and, and other harmful substances. After soaking, rinse well under running water. Once cooked, they can be used in many recipes including bread and cakes. Avoid commercial flours made out of beans and pulses as they have not been pre-soaked before grinding. There are many wonderful traditional recipes for cooking beans and pulses. However, if you have digestive problems, you may find them difficult to digest. For this reason, many of the world's traditional cultures ferment their beans and pulses, which makes them easy to digest, even for babies. Buy and use only natural fats. We are talking about the fats that Mother Nature provided and which traditional cultures around the world have been using for millennia. Animal fats, fats on meats, butter and ghee, coconut and palm oil, cold pressed virgin olive oil, and other cold pressed virgin natural oils. Flax, hemp, avocado, evening primrose, walnut, sunflower, etc. Cold pressed plant oils are difficult to produce and therefore are expensive. They are full of very fragile, health-giving substances and must not be used for cooking as heat would destroy them. They are also easily damaged by oxygen and light, so we have to extract them with minimum exposure to air and keep them refrigerated in dark glass bottles. Use these cold-pressed oils in small amounts as a dressing on ready-served meals or take them as a supplement. They will provide you with essential fatty acids, antioxidants, vitamin, vitamin E, and many other good things. However, the majority of us don't have to buy these oils at all. Just eating fresh nuts, seeds, particularly sprouted, green leafy vegetables, and other fresh vegetables, berries, and fresh fruit will provide you with all the beneficial plant oils necessary. Avoid all vegetable and cooking oils widely available in supermarkets. They are extremely processed substances full of trans fats, solvents, and other harmful chemicals. Consumption of these oils and margarines is one of the main causes of our many degenerative 
conditions. Conditions. So what fats do we use for cooking? Cook with animal fats such as lard, pork dripping, lamb fat, beef fat, goose fat, duck fat, etc. It is best to do what our grandmothers did. Collect the fats yourself after cooking your meats. They will keep in a glass jar in your refrigerator for a long time and are excellent to use for cooking. Roasting a duck will provide you with a cup of excellent fat, which has been proven to be heart protective. Roasting a large goose will provide you with even more of an excellent cooking fat. You can buy some of these fats from a traditional butcher. You can also cook with butter, ghee, natural coconut oil, and palm oil. All these fats are healthy for us and very stable. They generally do not change their chemical structure when we cook with them they can even be reused. I almost hear you asking a number of very common questions. What about the deadly saturated fats? Don't they, cause, don't they cause heart disease, cancer, and all other health problems? Are animal fats all saturated? These questions are the result of the re relentless efforts made by the food industry to fight their competition. What is their competition? The natural fats, of course. There is not much profit to be made from the natural fats, while processed oils and fats bring very good profits. So it is in the food industry's interest to convince everybody that natural fats are harmful for health, while their processed fats, hydrogenated, and cooking oils are good for us. We have been subjected to this propaganda for almost a century now. No wonder that many of us have succumbed to it. The food industry singled out saturated fats in particular. How did that happen? The late Dr. Mary Enig, an international expert in lipid biochemistry explained. In the late 1950s, an American researcher, Ansel Keys, announced that the CHD epidemic was being caused by the hydrogenated vegetable fats. Previously, the same person had introduced the idea that saturated fat was a culprit. The edible oil industry quickly responded to this perceived threat to their products by mounting a public relations campaign to promote the belief that it was only the saturated fatty acid component in the hydrogenated oils that was causing the problem. From that time on, the edible fats and oils industry promoted the twin ideas that saturates, namely animal and dairy fats, were troublesome and polyunsaturates, mainly corn oil and later soybean oil, were health-giving. The wealthy food giants spend billions on employing an army of scientists to provide them with scientific proof of their claims. In the meantime, the real science was and is providing us with the truth. However, it is the food giants who have the money to advertise their science in all the popular media. Real science is too poor to spend money on that. As a result, the population hears only what the commercial powers want them to hear. So what is the truth? What does real science tell us? Processed fats, hydrogenated fats, and cooking vegetable oils cause ather atherosclerosis, heart disease, and cancer. This is a fact proven overwhelmingly by real, honest science. All animal experiments to prove the hypothesis that fats cause heart disease were made with processed fats and processed oxidized cholesterol, which makes them completely invalid. Animal fats have nothing to do with heart disease, cancer, or any other chronic illness. In fact, they prevent them. Our human physiology needs these facts. Needs these fats. They are important for us to eat on a daily basis. Saturated fats are heart protective. They lower levels of a harmful substance called LPA in the blood, reduce calcium de deposition in the arteries, and are the preferred source of energy for the heart muscle. Saturated fats enhance our immune system, protect us from infections, and are essential for the body to be able to utilize the unsaturated omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. One of the most saturated fats that nature has provided is coconut oil. 
It has been shown to be wonderfully healthy and therapeutic in most degenerative conditions. Animal fats contain a variety of different fatty acids, not just saturated ones. Pork fat is 40% monosaturated, 11% polyunsaturated, and 44% saturated. Lamb fat is 38% monosaturated, 2% polyunsaturated, and 58% saturated. Beef fat is 47 monosaturated, 4% polyunsaturated, and 49% saturated. Butter is 30% monosaturated, 4% polyunsaturated, and 52% saturated. This is the natural composition of animal fats, and our bodies use every bit, including the saturated part. If you want to understand how important every bit of the animal fat is for us, let us have a look at the composition of human breast milk. The fat portion of the breast milk is 48% saturated, 33% monosaturated, and 16% polyunsaturated. Our babies thrive beautifully on this composition of fats, and the, and the largest part of this is saturated. We need all of the natural fats in natural foods, and saturated and monosaturated fats need to be the largest part of our fat intake. The simplistic idea that eating fat makes you fat is completely wrong. Consuming processed carbohydrates causes obesity. Dietary fats go into the structure of your body, your brain, bones, muscles, immune system, etc. Every cell in the body is made out of fats to a large degree. These are the facts which honest science has provided. Unfortunately, most of us do not hear about the discoveries of honest science. Spreading any information in this world costs money, which honest science doesn't have. So the population at large mostly gets information that serves somebody with a fat wallet. In order to obtain the true information on any subject, we have to search for it rather than relying on the news and scientific breakthroughs unleashed on us by the popular media. This is particularly true for our understanding of cholesterol. What about cholesterol? When we talk about animal fats, a question about cholesterol invariably comes up because everybody has heard about cholesterol clogging up your arteries and causing heart disease. This idea came from the diet heart hypothesis first proposed in 1953. Since then, this hypothesis has been proven to be completely wrong by many scientific studies. George Mann, eminent American physician and scientist, called the diet heart hypothesis the greatest scientific deception of this century, perhaps of any century. Why? Because while science was working on providing, on proving the hypothesis wrong, the medical, political, and scientific establishments fully committed to it. To admit that they were wrong would do too much damage to their reputation, so they are not in a hurry to do that. In the meantime, their closed ranks give complete freedom to the commercial companies to exploit the diet heart hypothesis to their advantage. Their relentless propaganda through the popular media ensures long life for the faulty diet heart hypothesis. Thanks to the promoters of the diet heart hypothesis, everybody knows that cholesterol is evil and has to be fought at every turn. If you believe the popular media, you would think that there is simply no level of cholesterol low enough. The truth is that we humans cannot live without cholesterol. Let us see why. Every cell of every organ in our bodies has cholesterol as a part of its structure. Cholesterol is an integral and very important part of our cell membranes, the membranes that make the cell wall and the walls of all our organelles inside the cells. And we are not talking about a few molecules of cholesterol here and there. In many cells, almost half of the cell wall is made from cholesterol. Different kinds of cells in the body need different amounts of cholesterol depending on their function and purpose. The human brain is particularly rich in cholesterol. About 25% of all body cholesterol is taken by the brain. Every cell and every structure in the brain and the rest of our nervous system needs cholesterol. 
not only to build itself but also to accomplish its many functions. The developing brain and eyes of the, fo of the fetus and a newborn infant require large amounts of cholesterol. If the fetus doesn't get enough cholesterol during development, the child may be born with a congenital abnormality called a cyclopean eye. Human breast milk provides a lot of cholesterol. Not only that, mother's milk provides a specific enzyme to allow the baby's digestive tract to absorb almost 100% of that cholesterol. Because the developing brain and eyes of an infant require large amounts of it. Children deprived of enough cholesterol in infancy end up with poor eyesight and brain function. Manufacturers of infant formulas are aware of this fact, but following the anti-cholesterol dogma, they produce formulas with virtually no cholesterol in them. One of the most abundant materials in the brain and the rest of your nervous system is a fatty substance called myelin. Myelin coats every nerve cell and every nerve fiber like an insulating cover around electric wires. Apart from insulation, it provides nourishment and protection for every tiny structure in our brain and the rest of the nervous system. People who start losing their myelin develop a condition called multiple, multiple sclerosis. Well, 20% of myelin is cholesterol. If you start interfering with the supply of cholesterol in the body, you put the very structure of the brain and the rest of the nervous system under threat. The synthesis of myelin in the brain is tightly connected with the synthesis of cholesterol. People with multiple sclerosis and other neurological illnesses have antibodies against myelin. Due to these antibodies, these patients have ongoing damage to the myelin in their brain and the rest of their nervous system. In order to rebuild myelin, their bodies require a lot of cholesterol. In my clinical experience, foods with high cholesterol and high animal fat content are an essential medicine for people with multiple sclerosis. One of the most wonderful abilities we humans are blessed with is an ability to remember things, our human memory. How do we form memories? By our brain cells establishing connections with each other called synapses. The more healthy synapses a person's brain can make, the more mentally able and intelligent that person is. Scientists have discovered that synapse formation is almost entirely dependent on cholesterol, which is produced by the brain cells in a form of apilopine protein E. Without the presence of this factor, we could not form synapses and hence we would not be able to learn or remember anything. Memory loss is one of the side effects of cholesterol lowering medications called statins. In my clinic, I see growing numbers of people with memory loss who have been taking cholesterol pills. Dr. Duane Graveline, MD, former NASA scientist and astronaut, suffered such memory loss while taking his cholesterol pill. He managed to save his memory by stopping the pill and eating lots of cholesterol-rich foods. Since then, he has described his experience in his book, Lipitor, Thief of Memory, Statin Drugs and the Misguided War on Cholesterol. Dietary cholesterol in fresh eggs, butter, and other cholesterol-rich foods has been shown in scientific trials to improve memory in the elderly. In my clinical experience, any person with memory loss or learning problems needs to have plenty of these foods every single day in order to recover. Let us see which foods are rich in cholesterol. Just like our own human brain, the brains of animals are rich in cholesterol. Animal brains are the richest food source for cholesterol, providing from 3100 milligrams of cholesterol per 100 grams of beef brain to 1352 milligrams of cholesterol per 100 grams of lamb brain. In traditional cultures, the brains of animals were considered to be a delicacy and were known to be very beneficial for health. Organ meats are rich in cholesterol. Veal kidney can provide 791 milligrams per 100 grams 
while chicken liver can provide 563 milligrams per 100 grams. Other organ meats, livers, and kidneys of other animals, heart, tongue, tripe, pancreas, and poultry giblets will all provide good amounts of cholesterol. Organ meats have always been considered to be health foods and sacred foods in traditional cultures all over the world. Caviar, fish eggs, is the next richest source. It provides 588 milligrams of cholesterol per 100 grams. Cod liver follows closely with 570 milligrams of cholesterol per 100 grams. There is no doubt that the cholesterol element of cod liver oil plays an important role in the well-known health benefits of this time-honored health food. Fresh egg yolk takes the next place with 424 milligrams of cholesterol per 100 grams. I would like to repeat, fresh egg yolk, not chemically mutilated egg powders, they contain chemically mutilated cholesterol. Butter provides a good 218 milligrams of cholesterol per 100 grams. We are talking about natural butter, not butter substitutes. Cold water fish and shellfish such as salmon, sardines, herring, mackerel, and shrimps provide good amounts of cholesterol ranging from 173 milligrams to 81 milligrams per 100 grams. The proponents of low cholesterol diets tell you to replace the meats with fish. Obviously, they are not aware of the fact that fish can be almost twice as rich in cholesterol as meats. Lard provides 94 milligrams of cholesterol per 100 grams. Other animal fats follow. These foods give the body a hand in supplying cholesterol, so it does not have to work as hard to produce its own. What a lot of people don't realize is that most cholesterol in the body does not come from food. The healthy human body produces cholesterol as it is needed. Cholesterol is such an essential part of our human physiology that the body has very efficient mechanisms to keep blood cholesterol at a certain level. When we eat more cholesterol, the body produces less. When we eat less cholesterol, the body produces more. However, cholesterol-lowering drugs, statins, are a completely different matter. They interfere with the body's ability to produce cholesterol, and hence they do reduce the amount of cholesterol available for the body to use. If we do not take cholesterol-lowering drugs, most of us don't have to worry about cholesterol. However, there are people whose bodies are unable to produce enough cholesterol due to toxicity and nutritional deficiencies. Research shows that people who are unable to produce enough cholesterol are prone to emotional instability and behavioral problems. Low blood cholesterol has been routinely recorded in criminals who have committed murder and other violent crimes, people with aggressive and violent personalities, people prone to suicide, and people with aggressive social behavior and low self-control. The late Oxford professor David Horobin has stated, reducing cholesterol in the population on a large scale could lead to a general shift to more violent patterns of behavior. Most of this increased violence would not result in death, but in more aggression at work and in the family, more child abuse, more wife beating, and generally more unhappiness. People whose bodies are unable to produce enough cholesterol do not need to have plenty of foods rich in cholesterol in order to provide their organs with the essential to life substance. What else do our bodies need cholesterol for? After the brain, the organs hungriest for cholesterol are our endocrine glands, adrenals, and sex glands. They produce steroid hormones. Steroid hormones in the body are made from cholesterol, testosterone, progesterone, pregnolone, androsterone, osterone, estradiol, cortisone, aldosterone, and others. These hormones accomplish a myriad of functions in the body, from regulation of our metabolism, energy production, mineral assimilation, brain, muscle and bone 
and bone formation to behavior, emotions, and reproduction. Our stressful modern lives consume a lot of these hormones, leading to a condition called adrenal exhaustion. There are some herbal preparations on the market for adrenal exhaustion. However, the most important therapeutic measure is to provide your adrenal glands with plenty of dietary cholesterol. Cholesterol is essential for our immune system to function properly. Animal experiments and human studies have demonstrated that immune cells rely on cholesterol in fighting infections and repairing themselves after the fight. It has been recorded that people with high levels of cholesterol are protected from infections. They are four times less likely to contract AIDS. They rarely get common colds and they recover from infections more quickly than people with normal or low blood cholesterol. On the other side of the spectrum, people with low blood cholesterol are prone to various infections, suffer from it longer, and are more likely to die from an infection. A diet rich in cholesterol has been demonstrated to improve these people's ability to recover from infections. So any person suffering from an acute or chronic infection needs to eat high cholesterol foods to recover. Cod liver oil, one of the richest sources of cholesterol, has been prized as the best remedy for the immune system. Those familiar with old medical literature will tell you that, until the discovery of antibiotics, a common cure for tuberculosis was a daily mixture of raw egg yolks and fresh cream rich in cholesterol. Our authorities are concerned about hospital infections such as MRSA, which are getting more and more common. Almost every patient older than 45 is put on statins in our hospitals, reducing their blood cholesterol and as a result, impairing their immune function. There is no doubt that this common practice is a major cause of hospital infections. It is beyond the scope of this book to talk about all the roles of cholesterol and animal fats in the human body. To understand this subject fully, please read my book, Put Your Heart in Your Mouth, What Really Causes Heart Disease and What We Can Do to Prevent and Even Reverse It. Buy whole, unprocessed grains and prepare them properly before consuming. Buckwheat, millet, quinoa, oats, barley, brown rice, etc. to be cooked at home following traditional recipes. Do not buy processed grains or anything made out of flour. The most processed grains you can buy are breakfast cereals. Whole grains should not be consumed without proper preparations as they contain a number of harmful substances. They contain lectins, which can damage the gut wall and many other tissues and organs. They contain phytates, which impair mineral absorption and can cause serious mineral deficiencies and bone loss. Regular consumption of bran, in particular, is linked to osteoporosis. They contain hard-to-digest proteins and starches. Wheat, rye, oats, and barley contain a protein called gluten, which is very difficult to digest for most of us and is positively dangerous for people with any digestive problems. The popular advice to eat whole grains is misleading because they are generally undigestible for humans and can do a lot of harm in the body. Herbivorous animals have several stomachs full of bacteria which digest the plant matter for them. We humans have only one stomach which, if it is healthy, has very little bacteria in it and has not been designed to digest grains without prior preparation. Traditional cultures around the world have known this fact for millennia and have always fermented or sprouted grains prior to cooking them. Fermentation reduces the amounts of lectins and phytates, predigest gluten and starch and releases nutrients. To ferment, the grains can simply be soaked in water for several days. To speed up the process, you can add a few spoonfuls of live yogurt, kefir, or whey to the water. When the grain has fermented, cook it in the usual way. 
Another excellent way to make grains more digestible is sprouting. Sprouting is a very easy procedure. Soak unprocessed grains for 12 to 24 hours in water, then drain and keep moist in a warm place for a few days. As grains are seeds, they will sprout small shoots. In that form, they are much more nourishing and easier to digest raw or cooked. There's a very important point to make about grains, whether whole or not. Traditionally, grains were always consumed with a good amount of natural fats. Butter, ghee, olive oil, coconut or palm oil, goose fat, duck fat, pork fat, etc. There is a lot of wisdom to that. Grains are a concentrated source of carbohydrates and unless their digestion is slowed down by fats, these carbohydrates will absorb quite quickly in the form of sugars raising the blood sugar level too high with many damaging consequences. So the last thing you want to do is eat your grains fat free. The same goes for potatoes, sweet potatoes, yams, Jerusalem artichokes, parsnips, and other starchy vegetables. They are a con concentrated source of carbohydrates, so their digestion needs to be slowed down by adding good amounts of natural fats. If you need to lose weight, suffer from diabetes, or have digestive problems, avoid grains and starchy vegetables altogether, and obviously anything made out of them. People with any digestive problems must avoid all grains and starchy vegetables until their digestion improves. What about bread? The majority of people find it very difficult to avoid eating bread. People generally believe that bread is good for them because humankind has consumed it for thousands of years. The problem is that what we call bread nowadays is very different to what humans consumed even a hundred years ago. When did you last look at the ingredients list of the bread you buy? You will find that most breads on the shelves of our supermarkets and our bakeries are extremely processed products full of dozens of chemicals, soy protein isolate, margarine, harmful vegetable oils, modified starch, hydrogenated oils, etc, etc. Bread is probably the biggest source of processed foods that the majority of us eat today. If you want bread, make your own, following traditional time-proven bread-making recipes. These are not the recipes that come with your bread-making machine. I highly recommend a wonderful recipe book by Sally Fallon, Nourishing Traditions, which will provide you with traditional recipes from different cultures of the world. If you live in an area where your local baker makes traditional sourdough bread, then consider yourself extremely lucky. Remember that if you need to lose weight, suffer from diabetes, or have digestive problems, avoid grains and starchy vegetables altogether and anything made out of them. Bread made out of grains, generally wheat or rye flour, will do you no favors. However, if you bake bread using nuts and oily seeds ground into flour consistency, you will do your body a lot of good. You can buy almond flour, ground almonds, and coconut flour commercially or grind nuts, sunflower, and pumpkin seeds into a flour consistency. Add some eggs and butter mix and bake and you will have a delicious bread or a basis for making a cake. What about sweet taste? Nature has provided us with excellent sweeteners, natural unprocessed honey and dried fruit. Make sure the fruit is natural, not coated in sugar, syrup, or anything else. These sweet things are full of life-giving nutrients and do not damage the body. Avoid sugar and all artificial sweeteners. If you want to bake a cake, dried fruit such as dates, figs, and raisins will sweeten it for you beautifully and make your cake more nutritious. Before the introduction of sugar in the 17th century, honey and fruit were the only sweeteners that humans used in their diet. Starting from the end of the 17th century, sugar being cheaper and more available replaced honey and people's diet, beginning an era of sugar-related health problems. Honey is natural to our physiology, 
and far from damaging our health, it has a lot of health giving properties. Honey has been used as food and medicine for thousands of years. In Greek mythology, honey was considered a food fit for the gods. There are dozens of books written about the health giving properties of natural honey. It works as an antiseptic and provides vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and many other bioactive substances. Depending on the variety of flowers from which a particular honey has been collected, different flavors and compositions of nutrients and bioactive substances can be found in the honey. Traditionally, honey has been used to treat digestive disorders, chest and throat infections, arthritis, anemia, insomnia, headaches, debility, and cancer. It can be applied therapeutically to open wounds, eczema patches, skin rashes, skin and mouth ulcers, and erosions. Dried fruit will provide you with all the vitamins, minerals, and other beneficial substances that fruit contains, but in concentrated amount amounts. As a result, in every traditional culture of the world, dried fruit was used as medicine for various health problems. It was specifically given to pregnant women and to couples who were trying to conceive a baby, to people with tuberculosis and other chronic infections, to people with neurological and psychological symptoms, and to people recovering from severe illness. Regular consumption of dried dates, raisins, figs, currants, berries, prunes, etc. will do much more for your health than the most expensive supplements in the world. Apart from that, they are the natural sweets Mother Nature gave us. So instead of buying commercial sweets which damage your children's health, teach them to eat dried fruit. Eat fermented foods prepared according to traditional methods. Fermentation is a use of beneficial microbes to preserve food for long periods of time. We have already mentioned natural live yogurt, kefir and cheese. These are fermented foods. Sauerkraut, fermented cabbage, kimchi and other fermented vegetables will provide you with wonderful nutrition and beneficial bacteria. Good quality wine, natural kvass, and natural beer with, without additives are fermented drinks and are good for us in moderate amounts. Traditionally, every culture of the world made fermented foods. People fermented dairy, grains, meats, fish, beans, pulses, vegetables, and fruit because that was the only way they could preserve food for a long time. Foods used to be seasonal and there were no supermarkets where one could buy anything all year round. For example, when your cabbages were ready, you had to do something with them, or they would rot away and you would be left without cabbage for the rest of the year. So people made sauerkraut and consumed it until the next harvest, taking in mouthfuls of beneficial probiotic bacteria active enzymes, and other wonderful substances that only a fermented food would provide. The process of fermentation predigests the food and releases its nutrients, which makes them more accessible for our bodies to use. For example, sauerkraut has almost 20 times more bioavailable vitamin C in it than the same amount of fresh cabbage. The famous British explorer James Cook, who discovered Australia and New Zealand, had barrels of sauerkraut on his ships to prevent scurvy in his crew. Through the ages, our physiology became used to having fermented food on a daily basis. It has become essential for us to stay healthy. Since we invented refrigeration, we humans have almost stopped consuming these foods. As a result, we are depriving ourselves of all the wonderful benefits that fermented foods would provide. Probiotic bacteria to keep our gut flora healthy, easy to digest nutrients, active enzymes to keep us young and energetic, and many other good things. There are many easy fermentation recipes that you can use at home. 
You can find these recipes online and in many good books on nutrition. Drink freshly pressed fruit and vegetable juices. You will need to have a good juicer at home and get fresh organic fruit and vegetables to juice. It is important to use organic produce because if you juice non-organic fruit and vegetables, you will get concentrated amounts of pesticides and other agricultural chemicals in your glass of juice. Thousands of people all over the world have freed themselves from the most deadly diseases with juicing. Dozens of books have been published on this subject, full of testimonies and wonderful recipes. Some very big names in natural medicine have strongly advocated juicing and used it actively in the treatment of their patients. People like Dr. Max Gerson and Dr. Norman Walker, for example. Hundreds of scientific studies have been published on the health benefits of fresh, raw fruit and vegetables. Juices provide all the goodness from these fruit and vegetables in a concentrated form and in large amounts. For example, to make a glass of carrot juice, you need a pound of carrots. Nobody can eat a pound of carrots at once, but you can get all the nutrition from them by drinking the juice. The digestive system has virtually no work to do when digesting freshly pressed juice. They get absorbed in 20 to 25 minutes, providing the body with a concentrated amount of nutrients. With juicing, you can consume large quantities of fresh vegetables and fruit every day in the most digestible and pleasant form. Many children in our modern world will not eat fruit and vegetables, and I know quite a few adults like that as well. Juices being so tasty can provide an excellent solution to this problem. Drinking freshly extracted juice will provide you and your child with many essential nutrients, vitamins, minerals, and other useful nutrients. A combination of pineapple, carrot, and a little bit of beetroot in the morning will provide the digestive system will prepare the digestive system for the coming meals, stimulate stomach acid production and pancreatic enzymes production. A mixture of carrot, apple, celery, and beetroot has a wonderful liver cleansing ability. Green juices from leafy vegetables, spinach, lettuce, coriander, parsley, dill, carrot, and beet tops with some tomato and lemon are a great source of magnesium and iron and help your body to remove toxic metals. Cabbage, apple, and celery juice stimulates digestive enzyme production and is a great kidney cleanser. There is an endless number of healthy and tasty variations you can make from whatever organic fruit and vegetables you have available at home. To make the juice taste nice, particularly for children, generally try to have 50% of less tasty but highly therapeutic ingredients. Carrot, small amounts of beetroot, no more than 5% of the juice mixture. Celery, cabbage, lettuce, greens, such as spinach, parsley, dill, basil, fresh nettle leaves, beet tops, and carrot tops and 50% of some tasty ingredients, pineapple, apple, orange, grapefruit, grapes, mango, etc. Any person with a de degenerative disease, any person under a lot of stress, any person recovering from jet lag or from an infection, and any person who is run down or simply tired would benefit tremendously from drinking freshly pressed juices. What about fiber? Drinking juices doesn't mean that you stop eating fresh fruit and vegetables. You should carry on eating fruit and vegetables as usual. Treat the juices like a supplement of concentrated nutrients in a glass. They should be taken on an empty stomach 25, 20 to 25 minutes before food and two to two and a half hours after a meal. Freshly pressed juices are highly perishable. They need to be consumed within a few minutes from extracting, 30 minutes maximum. So make just enough to be consumed immediately. 
whatever has not been consumed can be frozen as ice lollies for children or ice cubes for making cold drinks later. Children in particular love freshly pressed juices. You can make smoothies from them by mixing the juice with mashed avocado or banana and adding it to yogurt or homemade ice cream and sorbet. But can't we just buy juices from shops? The answer is a big no. Juices in the shops have been processed and pasteurized, which destroys all the enzymes and most vitamins and phytonutrients. They are a so source of processed sugar, which will feed abnormal bacteria and fungi in the gut and upset your blood sugar level. And freshly extracted juice, the natural sugars are balanced with active enzymes, minerals, and other nutrients, which turn them into nourishment and energy for the body. When you make your juice at home, you know what you put into it. You know that it is fresh without any contamination or oxidation. And you can have great fun mixing different fruit and vegetables together to make different tasty combinations. There is a large number of books written on juicing with wonderful recipes for every health problem and every occasion. Beverages. We have already mentioned fermented beverages such as good quality wine and homemade kvass. We have also discussed freshly pressed juices. All these beverages are good for us in reasonable amounts. Apart from those, it is important to drink plenty of water. What kind of water? As natural and as clean as possible, and that unfortunately does not include tap water in many parts of the world. Tap water contains many additives which will absorb into the bloodstream and cause damage. Chlorine, fluoride, nitrates, and agricultural chemicals to mention a few. That is why it is important to filter your tap water. A lot of bottled water on the market is no better than your tap water. When buying bottled water, look for natural mineral water from an established and known producer preferably in a glass bottle as plastic leaches harmful chemicals into the water. Lucky are those people who live near a clean well or a spring where they can drink natural water without anything added to it. It is a good idea to add a slice of lemon or teaspoon of organic apple cider vinegar to your glass of water as they will add alkalizing minerals and other good qualities. Many of us like to have a hot beverage, such as tea or coffee. These drinks are stimulants and a lot of people get addicted to them without knowing it. The way to find out if you are addicted is to stop drinking coffee and tea for a few days. An addicted person will get serious headaches and cravings for these beverages. If you are not addicted to them, there is nothing wrong with having a cup of tea or a cup of coffee occasionally. But make sure that you have good quality tea and coffee, freshly made out of quality organic ingredients, not instant and not processed. What What you also have to understand is that coffee and tea are dehydrating for your body. This means that they make your body acid and very thirsty for water. Make sure that you rehydrate yourself with plenty of water in juicy fruit and vegetables at other times of the day. It will also help if you have your tea with a slice of lemon instead of milk and eat a good piece of juicy fruit with your cup of coffee. Replace sugar with honey and if you want a snack with your hot drink, a helping of natural nuts and dried fruits will remove many of the negative influences that coffee or tea may have on your body. Cheese and honey also make a good snack to have with your cup of tea or coffee. Make sure that the cheese is natural and made according to traditional practices. It goes without saying that you should avoid eating biscuits and cakes with your hot beverage, which unfortunately is exactly what people commonly serve. There are many herbal teas on the market and their variety is growing. Most herbs are medicinal, which means that they will have a particular effect on your physiology. 
That is why many of them do not suit everybody. If you find an herbal tea that suits you, then make sure that it is organic, as non-organic herbal teas may contain toxic metals and other contaminants. It goes without saying that you must avoid all pop drinks and soft beverages, including cordials, if you want to avoid chronic disease. They are made out of sugar and chemicals, a double toxic attack on your body. The sugar-free soft drinks are even worse. They contain artificial sweeteners, which can be even more toxic than sugar. Strong alcoholic beverages are something you may want to indulge in very occasionally and in very small amounts. They load your liver with a lot of work, making it unable to handle the other toxins floating in your blood, which leaves them free to cause damage. Excessive alcohol and its toxic byproducts also directly cause many health problems. We have already talked about beer. Here I would like to add that it is made from grains and in the process of fermentation, the starch from grain is broken down into various forms of sugars. Beer is a concentrated source of processed carbohydrates. A syrup, which is made out of sugars that don't taste sweet, Many sugars in nature taste bland or even bitter. These sugars absorb quickly into your bloodstream and cause high blood sugar level and high insulin level. Both are dangerous as they lay the ground for excessive weight gain, diabetes, and heart disease. If you already have a predisposition to any of these health problems, it is a good idea to reduce your beer consumption or to avoid it altogether. In conclusion, when feeding yourself or your family, please remember these simple rules. Never economize on food and never compromise when it comes to food. Because if you do not eat well, you will not be healthy. And if you do not have your health, you will have no life. Compromise and economize on clothes, cars, entertainment, toys, etc., etc., but never on food. Buy good quality and fresh food. Organic is better than non-organic. Local produce is better than exotic food that has had to travel half across the world. Fruit and vegetables grown in a private garden are better than fruit and vegetables from any supermarket. Pasture-fed animals are better than those raised on grains or commercial animal foods. Traditionally grown and prepared food is better than modern inventions. Pick your own berries, fruit, and vegetables whenever you have a chance. Prepare your food with love and care. Do not burn or overcook it. Use traditional cooking methods. Do not use microwave ovens. Those of you who make these simple changes will gain endless benefits. Have you ever wondered what a balanced meal means? Our mainstream will tell you that it that it is proportions of carbs to protein and fat. No, that is not what it means. It means that, e that all your taste buds are singing praises to the meal you eat. Our taste buds are specialized. Some perceive sweet, some sour, some perceive salty, some astringent, some perceive pun pungent, and some perceive bitter. All of these tastes should be present in the meal. So when you make a meal, Add some sweet vegetables, carrots and beets, for example. Some bitter, celery leaves, dark green leaves, abergynes, courgette, spices and herbs. Some chilies, garlic, onion or herbs for a pungent taste. Some natural salt or seaweed. Broccoli, cauliflower, asparagus, and turnip for an astringent taste and some fermented vegetables, vinegar, or lemon to satisfy the sour taste. These guidelines will produce very tasty and satisfying meals for you. They have been an important part of Ayurveda, the full of wisdom ancient traditional medicine in India. But of course, the most important parts of any meal are the meat and the fat. We can cook our vegetables without meat, but we must add good amounts of fat into it. It is a fat that will bring out all the tastes and extract beneficial 
nutrients from the vegetables. The best fat to cook your vegetables with comes from animals. Bacon fat, pork dripping, lard, tallow, lamb fat, goose fat, butter, and ghee. Fat is essential for our bodies to be able to use minerals, vitamins, protein, and many other nutrients. The more animal fat you add to your meal, the more nourishment your body will get out of it. Eating out a lot is a very unhealthy habit that includes takeaway meals because you have no idea what kind of ingredients and cooking methods were used to make your meal. And you have no idea who cooked your meal and with what attitude. Why is the attitude of the cook important? It is very important because cooking is alchemy. The most important part of any alchemy is the alchemist, the person who makes the meal. The most important actions of the alchemist in the process are his thoughts and attitudes. This is what creates the magic. We humans are powerful creatures. If a person who cooks your meal doesn't like you and wishes you ill, this energy will permeate the meal they prepare for you. This meal will not bring you good health. The meals you eat must be produced by people who love you, who wish you to have the best health and happiness. This kind of meal will bring you good health and healing from any illness. The attitude of this cook is vital. If you don't have somebody loving to cook your meals for you, then cook them yourself and do it with love. When cooking, don't allow yourself to think about anything that makes you angry, resentful, or negative. The meals cooked with these attitudes will not digest well and will not bring you good health, no matter how good the ingredients and the recipe may be. The person who cooks for the family holds the health of the family in her or his hands. This is power. The health of any nation is not in the hands of governments or the medical profession. It is in the hands of those who cook for that nation. If the nation consumes things cooked by some faceless factories, then that nation will have poor health. Exactly what is happening in Western countries. In traditional societies, women knew the value of food. They knew that there is nothing more powerful in its effect on human health than food. They knew that through cooking, they were holding the health of their families in their hands. They would never relinquish that power to anyone else. Women knew what foods to use for what occasions. What is good for babies? What is good for pregnant women? What is good for a couple trying to conceive a baby? What is good for any illness or injury? And what is good for the elderly to eat? Women knew the herbs growing in their location and used them extensively in cooking. This sacred knowledge was passed through generations from mother to daughter, and, their, and from grandmother to granddaughter. From the dawn of the food industry, women started losing this knowledge. The food industry advertising lured them away from cooking and deceived them into relinquishing their God-given power to hold the health of their loved ones in their own hands. The result is a misery of sickness in Western families, which is getting deeper with every generation. To support their commercial aims, the industry has pronounced cooking as dirty and beneath women. Unfortunately, many women have succumbed to this propaganda, thinking that they gain some ill-conceived equality with men. There is no equality in nature. Instead, there is beauty of diversity and difference. Nature celebrates difference and unity of opposites complementing each other. Imagine if day decided to be equal with night or winter decided to be equal with summer. There's a glorious difference between women and men. They have different functions to fulfill in nature. Men's physiology represents moving forward, discovering and opening new horizons and possibilities, which in the history of humanity often led to wars and destruction. Women's physiology represents nurture, care, healing and repair. Women give birth to children and bring, bringing up children requires peace and prosperity. That is why more often than not in human history, it is women who brought peace to their countries directly or through influencing their men. 
So from nature's point of view, it is a woman's role to nurture her family. Women in the West must reclaim their power to look after the health of their families through food. Women who have done that are truly happy and fulfilled. And in modern, in our modern world, it is possible to do that and hold the profession as well. Of course, there are always exceptions to any rule. In some families, men are more nurturing than women and they do the cooking. Whoever is in charge of feeding the family must be a person who loves that family and who understands the responsibility they take upon themselves, holding the health of their loved ones in their hands. Cooking is not difficult. Following the guidelines in this book, anyone can become a cook. Forget the recipe books. Cooking is a very creative activity. Enjoy and create your own unique meals every time you cook. Just keep in mind, you are cooking for good health, not convenience, not expediency or anything else. Do your shopping and cooking with this thought. As a result, you will lay a solid foundation of your own health and the health of your family. And a healthy family is usually a happy family. And if your family consists of only one person, you, then make meals for this small family with as much love as you would have for a large family.